Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Turntable. Turntable. What about that other language we talked about? It's an amazing language. The language of... Steady, are you ready? Are you ready? What's going on? Steady, are you ready? Are you ready? What's going on? Tell me what's going on. Good evening. Uh, I'm Brian Butler from the Philosophy Department. Uh, happy to welcome you to the seventh annual uh, Door Lecture on Art and Aesthetics. This is the seventh annual Door Lecture. Joyce and Larry Door envisioned a, an annual lecture that would help bring a deeper understanding of the creative process to the UNC Asheville campus. With this in mind, they created an endowment uh, that the campus uses to bring a distinguished speaker on the nature of the creative process and the meaning of art in the contemporary world. It's an amazing language. The language of DJ. This year, we are honored to have as our door lecturer a world-renowned composer, writer, conceptual artist, and theorist. Paul Miller, also known as DJ Spooky, that subliminal kid. <laughs> Sorry, I don't understand. You're just not listening at all. I see him as a particularly appropriate lecturer for the area. His work clearly relates to such honored locals as Charles Olson, Robert Moog, John Cage, and Robert Rauschenberg. Can you speak? Is there anyone here who speaks? Further, the Emersonian tones found in his work exemplified exemplify a profound picture of the creative process, one with wide-ranging implications in such areas as originality, identity, and copyright law. Without further ado, Paul Miller. DJ. I speak DJ, he said. say the way they I communicate. With my hand. It's just too complex. Yo, did you follow me, or did I just go too far? I don't want to confuse y'all, so just, just, just. Listen to what I say. Hey, what's up, everybody? How you doing? Hello, hello. Um, first and foremost, I just want to say um, thanks to the philosophy department for bringing me. And, um, you know, I had no idea so many people were into philosophy. Eh? And the idea here is that we're looking at how do you make art out of patterns of culture? Something that's done quickly and elegantly, and then they're out. So that these kind of tags are such a kind of a testimony of people's passion for expression. So what you're seeing here is a battle between public space and private expression. And the goal of these kids, these were young kids, you know, 15, 13, 17, transform public space and try and use it in a beautiful way that made it reflect their local environment. So if you were from one neighborhood, you'd be able to see somebody's tag kind of like an encrypted message and be able to read it. Um, and be able to unpack the meaning out of that. So if you weren't from that area and you didn't know that style, it would be very hard to read. In fact, you'd be illiterate in that style. Wireless communication, cell phone relays. Imagine what happens when kids start tagging that. Bomb the system. So these are kinds of different literacy. So from one network to another, what I want to do tonight is pull you guys out of this idea of urban youth culture as just breakdancing, graffiti, hip-hop, and DJing but to get you to think about it as a broad spectrum thing here. It's not just urban youth culture, it's global culture, it's global digital culture. Gift of expression, gift of expression, gift of expression. Ladies and gentlemen, George Bush. During these last few months, I've been trained by Al-Qaeda, and I'm weak and materialistic. 
I told our country and I told the world, if it feels good, do it. I hope you'll enjoy me in expressing fear and selfishness. We will embrace tyranny and death as a cause and a creed. Let's roll. The 20th century's kind of main motif for me as an artist was that it was the era of mass production, mass consumerism, mass man. Uh, what they call the man in the gray hat, you know, the 1950s character in a flannel suit. Everyone dressing the same and basically they, you know, the company man. 21st century, the 21st century is the era of mass customization where you're being able to have all this media around you, all these clothes, all these shoes, all these books, uh, the PDF files, Wikipedia, YouTube. And it's not about their version, it's about your version. And nobody knows what's going on, right? Um, so in philosophy, because this is a philosophy lecture, um, <laughs> I think they would call that postmodern. It implies that there's a gift going on here where you're transforming and then giving and exchanging. Inheritance of what philosophers throughout the ages like to think of as this kind of idea of consciousness, because you're looking at something that relates to objects and subjectivity and pulls things from A to B and back again. So there's these kinds of loops and feedback, loops and feedback, loops and feedback, loops and feedback going on. It's not necessarily about the old school method of thinking about art as just a sculpture or just painting. Uh, cell phones. Keep, you, you can keep them on, right? We can just, right, we'll do a little cell phone symphony in a second. <laughs> But um, the whole idea here is not only is it just a kind of situation where you have uh, people responding to a media environment where they feel a connection and then also have an irreverence for the control mechanisms. It's not a passive situation. As a matter of fact, the remix says, look, I heard that, I saw that, I want to make my own version. But the whole idea is that it's about the mashup. The remix says that there's an irreverence for the normal boundaries between black, white, Asian, Latino, America, Brazil, India, Russia, China, it's a blur. So it means that it's a participatory culture. You know, it's not one where you just press play, you know, like a previous generation or a couple generations ago. Because people back then were conditioned to see bands. They needed to see something live. They wanted to see you play or hear you sing. But for us, it's the opposite. We're used to actually pressing play on a record and then maybe you go see the band. It's very rare that you do the opposite. As a matter of fact, most of our experiences of entertainment and culture are from recordings. So that turns the whole world upside down in terms of how normal human expression over the last several centuries works. Everybody's used to the live. You hear someone speak. Or like that Bush remix, you can edit how someone speaks, 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 speaks. Um, I think he actually sounded more coherent in the remix than... Um, <laughs> than in the original, but hey, you know. So the imaginary landscape of the 20th century becomes the digital landscape of the 21st.
You can hear something, but it doesn't necessarily mean the same thing as when you see it. The whole idea there was a reinterpretation, a recontextualization. So what you're hearing is, what I like to say, is an uneasy tension between context and content. The way that you look at something, it carries a lot of clout. You know, the, the, the regard, the gaze, it looks back at you. It's been outsourced, it's been repurposed, it's been something that essentially is no longer made along the normal ways. It's not about one place, but about the way they all converge. Uh, one of my favorite filmmakers, Méliès, uh, made at the turn of the last century. What you're going to see here is he's made copies of himself. Here we go. En 1900, il y a donc presque 100 ans, Méliès représente ce qu'il était réellement dans la vie, un homme orchestre. So what's so beautiful about that piece is essentially he made copies of himself. And there's an editing technique going on there in the same way that the Rolling Stones piece I just showed made copies and edits and splices. If anybody out there is a film director, you can kind of get the idea here is that you're playing with sequencing. It's the culture of the cut. You know, where you splice and dice these elements. You're playing with sequencing and make them, again, play in context. The sample itself, the sample itself, the sample itself is part of the vocabulary. So it's like Lego blocks. You know, you put one clip on top of the other, and next thing you know, you get a new structure. And I enjoy seeing that kind of pop culture reflection. But the thing with sampling is about, it's about playing with voices and being able to break voices up, sample, 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 break voices up, take small elements of them, sample. These kinds of avant-garde statements are now part of the way we think about art, whether it be you know, going to Disney and being in a simulated environment, or for that matter, when you go to a band like Sonic Youth, or you hear Rage Against the Machine, or you hear all these different bands, they are the, you know, the children of noise. But the issue is that it was about role playing. Identity and the way that the human being relates to technology at this point is that we're a very tenuous relationship to the idea of realism and how people and places and things are represented it's not necessarily going to be about reality. It's going to be about the editing of that reality. Editing reality. Reality. Editing of that reality. The editing of that reality. And make them play in context. You're playing with sequencing. So the Bush remix versus the Rolling Stones versus sampling an entire orchestra or having a crazy KKK film play at the Acropolis, the connecting thread here and the common denominator is a sense of irreverence between context and content. So I'd like to look at this as a kind of model of abstraction, when communication is both about poetry and about mathematics. 21st century is the era of mass customization, global digital culture, the gift of expression. All this stuff is saying that these kinds of collisions of culture are no longer about the relevant rules of the past. The gift of expression. It's about looking at trade. And that's a basic fabric of human communication. It's about quoting certain emotions. You have to imagine that American pop culture is these kinds of cross-sections of bizarre paradoxes. And that's what I think about right now. Is it's not about purity. It's about hybridity, anti-PC, weird, strange cultural shit going on. It, as an artist and a writer, I'm looking at digital media as breaking down a lot of the issues of the 20th century. And as we move further and further into the 21st century, I can promise you it's going to get weirder.
Um, so yeah, that Saul Williams piece is remixable, downloadable from the website. It's djspooky.com. And um, I guess I just want to say thank you guys for coming out. The whole idea is that it's about communication. And um, I can promise you it's going to get weirder. demonstration.
That singing now. Whatever. Going on up there. If you don't, I'm going to call the cops. 